Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about one of my very favorite ways to rig power bait. Let's start right now. Some things you are going to need are one of these little bubble bobbers. You can get these made by Ozark Trail. You're going to need any small size of treble hook about this size. These are made by Eagle Claw. You can find these at Walmart. You can also find those Ozark Trail bobbers at Walmart. And the next thing you're going to need is either a snap swivel, one of these little guys here, or a barrel swivel which is basically just this back side here. This is what a barrel swivel looks like here. This is a snap swivel. And this is a barrel. And lastly, you're gonna need a bright color of power bait. And I definitely go with either garlic, um, cheese, corn, anything like that is a bright color, but um, definitely a first scent you guys should get is garlic. So we need to start by putting the bobber through our line like this. So we're going to thread our line through the big end here. There's a smaller end and a bigger end. You're going to want to put it through the biggest end first and out this end. And the next thing you're going to do when you get it on that end is tie this swivel that we mentioned earlier to it. We just do it the exact same way I always do it. We're going to put it in through one way, bring it down. Get your little tag in here, make sure there's a little bit left so you can get that through the hole later. And again, twisting, it's a lot easier to do it with these swivels. Um, now that you have your little hole here, your little golden hole in the line. You put that in, you tighten it up. I have a video in the description link below about exactly how I just tied this knot. If you guys want to go look at that for a reference, it's a really good explanational video. It's only two minutes and 50 seconds. You guys can watch that really quick and get right back to fishing. Having the swivel on below this bobber makes it so that this bobber can't pass the swivel. And that way, when you tie the other piece of line you're gonna need to the other end of your swivel, it, the trout aren't going to be able to see the bobber. The bobber's not gonna be right next to your bait. That way the bobber is still further furthest away from your bait and you can actually add heavier line to the end for a leader or fluorocarbon depending if you have braid on or something like that whatever you guys well, the line that you guys are going to add here is definitely either going to be just the line that you guys have just some monofilament like if, even if it's the exact same weight you just you're, you guys are going to need line there to tie your hook to next we're going to grab probably about two feet or so of some line to put on the other end of our swivel. And we're just gonna tie that on the exact same way we tied it just before. And I'll show you guys when I have it finished. Remember that you're gonna cut that little slack off after you finish tying, probably about to right there. So that you still have a little bit, guys. So I'll show you guys up close how much you guys probably wanna leave as far as slack goes. So you're gonna have a tiny little bit here this little extra, this doesn't connect to anything. You're just gonna cut it off probably about right there. You have a tiny little bit left for good measure. And now that we have our bobber, our swivel, and our line almost ready, we just need to tie on a hook at the bottom. Again, we'll be using one of these little treble hooks. These are made by Eagle Claw and many various other brands. You can find these all kinds of places. A great trout fishing hook and great for power bait. We're going to tie this on the exact same way we tied it with the swivels. Um, if you guys have a different knot, it really doesn't matter what kind of knot you use, especially if you guys already know one. But I, I think that just your typical overhand knot really isn't enough to get it. But um, I have a video link again down in the description. You guys can find it. It's about how to tie the hangman's knot, which I think is a really good fishing knot. Many people use it for fishing. And it's overall a really good knot for keeping your line on. And it's pretty simple, guys. It's a really, really easy knot. You can learn it really quickly. And I think my video does a pretty good job explaining how to do that. So now that our hook's on, just like every time we tie our line on, you want to make sure that you cut off this little tag in we don't need. And remember to leave a tiny bit so that um, a fish won't untie our line like that so we have a little bit here left so that it can't go back on itself and undo it so as we as you can see we have 
our bobber, our swivel, probably about two or three feet even of line, two and a half feet. So the bobber is separated from the hook. Then the trout are not scared away by it. Have a little hook, swivel, bobber, and it can slide up and down freely. But it definitely, you want to make sure you have that swivel on there so it can't go all the way down to your hook and scare the fish away. We're now on the second to last step, and that is power bait. We're going to be grabbing a little piece here, just enough to fit onto our hook. We don't need very much at all, just a small little piece, and we're just going to put that. We're just going to wedge it up on our hook, just like that. We're just going to ball it up like so. And what I like to do after I get it on is leave it in the water for a little bit get it all good and then we cast it and then try and catch a fish but there you go you don't need very much on leave the little ends of the hooks exposed so that if a trout does bite it it won't lose it you won't you won't lose the fish because the bait will you don't got you guys don't need to worry about the bait staying on necessarily you need to be worrying about the fish being set so you guys are going to be have to worry about getting that fish on the hook um, but I definitely recommend making sure your bait stays on good enough so that you guys can cast it because that would be a problem. And our last step, we go back to the bobber here. This little bobber needs to be weighed somehow um, so that we can, so that it will sit up like that or sit up like this. We, we just need to make sure that we put water in here. And the best way to do that is you pop these little ends out. You can just take this little end here, pull that up, and you can... Do it right in the lake. Just dip your bobber in. I have a little bowl with me here filled with water. I can dip it in here, fill it up with water, give it a couple taps. I have a little bowl of water here to fill it up. Probably about halfway, you guys. You don't need that much. And then after you get that much in there, you're just going to seal the bobber. And then you have it filled so that it's weighed on the bottom so that when you cast it, it will sit like so. And you will know when you get a fish. You have bait, you have your two feet of line connected to your swivel, and your bobber, which rests just above your swivel. That should be all you guys need to know about how to cast this. If this video helped you or if you're going to try this, definitely recommend letting me know down in the comments um, what I should do next. I am going to read the comments. If you guys recommend something, like maybe you guys want me to try and fish with the same rig, maybe you guys want me to do a fishing challenge, anything like that, you guys, I can make a live stream. This weekend, it doesn't really matter. If you guys have a recommendation, I'll definitely look at it and reply to your recommendation, whether um, I can do it or not. With that being said, guys, I think we covered everything. Um, do you guys have any questions? Let me know in the comments. Like, subscribe. Don't forget to share this video with anyone who is also new to fishing and wants to learn this rig. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.